coming back. This is Boomer Life on CL 650. When you load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Well, I, I, our guest certainly likes that choice of song. Our producer, Dwayne Bishop, raking up a little uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford in 16 tons. Another day of work and another day of debt. Our, our guest in studio is Phil McCourt, Senior Vice President from Abacan and Associates. They are proposal administrators and trustees in bankruptcy with five offices around British Columbia from as far north as Prince George and Vernon in the interior to the coast where they have offices in Vancouver, Surrey, and in Victoria as well. Uh, Phil, let's talk a little bit about the, the consumer proposal. Just before the break, we identified the fact that when people get into serious financial difficulties and uh, you, you start feeling isolated, you start feeling the whole world is against you, and you know you've really made a big mistake or two along the way, and then you figure you, you get to the point, well, uh, I'm at the end of my tether. I'm just, I'm just going bankrupt. I've, I've had it. And then this, they sit down with a pro like yourself and discover to their surprise, to their amazement in some cases, no, I actually don't have to go bankrupt. I can take another route that's perfectly legal, sanctioned by the courts, and it's called a, a consumer proposal. Consumer proposal. So tell us about consumer proposals. Bill, what are they? Uh, consumer, as the word, a consumer proposal. Proposal for consumers to use. Actually, the, the rules about consumer proposals is if you are an individual, not a company, but an individual, and you owe less than $250,000. Okay. And that does not include mortgage on your principal residence, but can include other 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 debts. And actually, until a few years ago, the number was 75000 but somehow the government decided to better bump it up to $250,000. because. <clears throat> Because that's what was happening. So if you owe that amount, if you owe more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you can't avail yourself of a consumer proposal. You okay. have to go into another proposal. But we, that's a, we won't get into that one right now. Um, a proposal provides that you can make arrangements with your creditors to pay them a certain percentage of their debt. It's a bit of a balancing act. What can you afford, and what will the creditors accept? And uh, normally it's in the range when we're talking about credit card debts. It's in the range of twenty-five to thirty cents on the dollar. Okay. Payable over a maximum of five years, so that's sixty payments. And um, by doing a consumer proposal and completing a consumer proposal, you avoid bankruptcy. Okay. Which has some some ramifications on credit ratings. So such. in order to f even be in a position to propose or to file a consumer proposal, there are a few a few basics that have to be in place. Number one, I would assume, Phil, is that you have cash flow. You have a job or some guaranteed form of, of secure income every month because that you're proposing to pay off your creditors yeah. based on your cash flow, you right? Have, exactly, uh, based on what your, what, what your income is. So yes, there's no point in doing a proposal that you're not, I mean, no, there are no guarantees, but there's no point in doing a proposal that you, you don't think you can complete. Right. Um, there's actually some situations where people would be required to make a proposal if they, may, they make a certain level of income, depending on their de the number of dependents they have, and and uh, it's a calculation we won't get into where they uh, they're going to have to make a proposal rather than go bankrupt. Okay. But in in lots of cases, there are people who who even though nobody could fault them for going bankrupt because their their income, what they bankruptcy act surplus income is not that much. They would rather do a proposal th than go bankrupt. And where do, where, where, do, where do you trustees come in in all of this? I know, obviously, a trustee is, is a person licensed by the government of Canada under the Bankruptcy Act, and only a trustee in Canada is authorized to file a consumer proposal on behalf of an individual, Yeah, it's, inter it's interesting. that a, bank a trustee in bankruptcy, uh, you can only go bankrupt by going to a trustee in bankruptcy. Right. You can only file a consumer proposal by going to, as you've, as you've mentioned, it's got proposal administrator. Right. And, and uh, amazingly, all proposal administrators right now are trustees. Okay. There was a, an attempt to make some other group proposal administrators, but that, that didn't go anywhere. So 
even though the, the name is proposal administrator, the only people that are proposal administrators are trustees in bankruptcy. Okay, right and, and so help me out here. This is this is this is where a lot of people get a little confused. Whose side are you on? <laughs> as the as the professional, you're you're kind of like I I get the feeling you're kind of like a Vince Ready, like an arbitrator, because you have to act on my interest as the uh, the beleaguered consumer in hopeless financial difficulty. But you're also you've also got these angry creditors out there to whom I owe some money. So whose side are you on? We wear lots of hats, but we wear we wear the hat. For the debtor, the debtor comes in, the person that owes money, and they come in and ask. They want help. Sure. And we have to offer them help. We tell them we we tell them the ramifications of their situation and what they're doing and what they can do, and give them the options about proposal and bankruptcy, and caution them about certain things, and ask ask them certain things about their life, about uh, you know who they are, have they. Have they had assets in the past that they now no longer have, and what happened? And those kind of those kind of questions to, uh, you know, have they paid any? Have they paid one creditor over another creditor, for example? Those sort of caution things that that give us the independence, the independence that we need to be able to advise the other the other group in this in this game, which are the creditors. Right. Okay. So, the debtor comes in, we advise them, the creditors rely on us to be able to tell them if there's anything untoward 99 percent of the time the people who are filing are innocent they're uh, unfortunate debtors right sometimes they're not <laughs> and sometimes we are able to find out things that perhaps the creditors may be interested in 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 knowing about what's going on in their lives. So, so that's the that's the yeah the two different roles. And a proposal administrator slash trustee in bankruptcy in Canada, Phil, is an officer of the court as well. Correct. We are an officer of the court. Yes. And what does that mean? That means when we report to the court or talk to the court, the court uh, can rely upon what we say to them the same way they could rely on a uh, on a lawyer. Okay. I mean, we're not lawyers. Right. Uh, and we don't, uh, but. But the court is able to rely, can can expect to be able to rely on what we say. Now, the reason I asked you about this officer of the court business, because if you're in personal financial difficulty and you go to a trustee uh, and you, you sit down for this this consultation and you go through all of the, the issues and, and the reasons why you're in debt and all the rest of it, but, you know... Uh, one of the reasons people are reluctant to come forward and resolve their financial issues is because, well, we're supposed to be able to take care of this by ourselves. We're supposed to be smart enough to figure this stuff out. We're not supposed to get into huge, hideous trouble. And yet we do. So then if we're going to see a trustee and these guys are officers of the court, geez, if I if I publicly admit my inability to, to run my financial affairs properly... It's going to end up in the paper for crying out loud. I'm going to be a, a publicly shamed. Has that? I mean, this is where people go. You get read. It gets weird, Phil, when you get into trouble and you and people start yelling at you and your life just sort of deteriorates into a kind of a paranoid state. Yeah, Pro proposals are, are neither did one or neither consumer. No proposal is ever advertised in the newspaper. Okay, it's an important thing to get out there. Yeah. Uh, it's in. It's often, most of the time, there are, there are court documents. So, and court documents are are open for anybody to see. Not that anybody, you know, not that too many people make a practice of going exactly. and rifling through the court documents. Right. Um, summary bankruptcies are also not advertised. Summary bankruptcies are bankruptcies where there are no, or less than fifteen thousand dollars worth of assets, and they are also not not advertised. So proposals aren't advertised aren't advertised in the paper and neither are neither are summary bankers so okay that, that's just an important thing because uh, again uh, yeah, people look for excuses not to act you said that earlier that in many cases it's typical that a person or a couple will take a year or two or more of this spiraling downwards and crazy financial stuff before they finally hit rock bottom and seek out the assistance of a person like yourself, a trustee. Yeah. So people in that period of, 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 of that spiral, things go really sideways and people develop all sorts of uh, mistaken uh, uh, 
ideas about what's going to happen when they try and remedy things and sort things out and get it back on track. And public shaming, I know it sounds weird, but people consider that and, and balk at the idea of getting things right because they don't, they don't want to deal with that. It's not going to happen, you're telling us. But, you know, people need to hear that, Phil. Well, pe- yeah, it's not going to it's not going to be advertised. I think public I think public shaming is 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 I think personal shame, feeling shame. A lot of most people feel feel it just in themselves anyway. Absolutely. So, you know, if it's publicized, uh, I, yeah, I suppose that would make it make a difference. But anyway, it's not. And, and, and <laughs> I, th- I, I would also think it's important to point out that when a person does sit down with yourself, or George, or Brett, or any of your colleagues at Abacan, this is is as a it, it, there's no judgment going on here. You feel bad enough. You don't need another scolding and a finger wagging or any of that sort of stuff. You need help exactly. from a competent professional. And so, the I think it's important to under, for people to understand that this the whole you're not going to be judged. You're going to be helped. I, that's exactly right. There's no, there's no judging going on at all. The, f- the first, the first um, interview, uh, no cost, initial interview, sure. like, and find out about the person. But there's no, there's no judging. All we want to, want to find out, and we do want to help. I mean, that's the, that's the, that was what makes, that's what makes our job. One of the things that makes our job. A good job. That's why I like my job, actually. Is being able to help people being sort their li- get their lives back, right? Yeah. Uh, when when uh, a, a person sits down and, and you were talking, uh, I'm going to follow up on something you alluded to. You have this discussion with a person. You ask. You have a series of questions that you would ask about their financial circumstances yes. and and cash flow and all of that other stuff. If a person tries to, well, game you. If they try to to fudge the numbers, um, is that a crime? I could be. There are certain duties. If somebody, there are certain duties. If if you have things that your creditors should benefit from, and you hide those things, that's an offense. Can be an offense under the bankruptcy act, which has some criminal. Uh, I mean, the Bankruptcy Act talks about jail, actually. Right. Certainly fines. Okay. So the reason I I bring this up is because, okay, you sit down and you disclose, here's my cash flow, here's how much I owe. And the only thing I don't tell you about is that little cottage I've got up in the Caribou, (laughs) a little fishing place that I've got. Bought it 25 years ago. Mustn't be worth much anyway. Not even worth bringing up. Well, you know, so you go away and you know everything about me except that little fishing camp I neglected to tell you about. Mm. So somebody's going to find that out uh, as an asset. And, uh, and what happens to the person who failed to disclose fully all of their net worth? Well, first of all, if if they've filed bankruptcy, there's going to be some impact on their being able to get discharged from bankruptcy. Okay. If, if they've, if they've, in essence, lied to the trustee. Yeah. And uh, being discharged from bankruptcy is the is a is a big deal. That's the date that all the debts go away. So if you've if you've lied and you're found out, then not you will lose the asset. As you should have done, not lose it, but as it should have been part of your estate to start with. Right. And and then yeah, you the ramifications of that are that you your your discharge your discharge certainly could be opposed by by the trustee. Right. Whether whether somebody wants to go and take time and money and have you convicted of an offense under the bankruptcy act is that that's a that's a cost that's a cost issue. Yeah, and and I, I wasn't necessarily looking for you know somebody to be locked up, but yeah, probably okay. just to point out the fact that if you're going to sit down with a with a trustee, and you're going to go to disclose all of the all of your life basically lay it out on the table, then lay it all out on the table and, and most Hold, people withholding do. information is silly M- most people do right most people are very transparent well i would think phil again you know coming to the fact that if they've taken this much time to finally come around to seeing you their life is is not very much fun so why not get all that bad stuff out on the table and and deal with it exactly Yes. Okay. We need to take a quick break here. When we come back, well, lots more to talk about with respect to consumer proposals. Yesterday was RSP deadline, so we'll find out about 
the the value of an RSP can for example people you owe money to get your RSP money that you've been saving all your life. We'll find out with Phil McCourt from Abacan and Associates. They are proposal administrators and trustees in bankruptcy with five offices around our province and located online at abacan.com. That's A-B-A-K-H-A-N.com. More on Boomer Life in a moment. Canada's only weekly radio show dedicated to the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CIL 650. 